Good morning, Malaysia. Thank you to the organizers for their kind invitation and especially to Dr. Fatima Salim for allowing me to do this by video. I wish I could be there with you in such a beautiful island, but right now we are welcoming our 22-23 students to the university and I couldn't move from here. I wish I will be able in the, in the next year or so. I will be presenting here the results of a cooperation between the groups of uh, Dr. Harrison Jacob at University Technology Malaysia and my research group, which started uh, or has been during many years at UCL, but I'm recently moved to the uh, newly formed Center for Natural Products Discovery at Liverpool University. This project deals uh, with the need of, of, of newer approaches and new lead compounds for tackling prostate cancer, which is, although it's more prevalent in Western countries, uh, it is on the rise also in Asia, South Asia, probably due to the um, people adopting more Western, um, Westernized lifestyles in your region. The main aim was to explore whether Kathy Fatima, uh, which uh, in, for many years its Latin name has been Lavicia Pumila, but uh, the accepted current name is now Marantodes Pumilum, uh, may have on prostate cancer. So um, to this end, we established this collaboration uh, in between Malaysia and United Kingdom. Uh, prostate cancer uh, overall in the world hits one out of seven men in once at least once in their lifetime. It is almost the same uh, statistics in UK, one in eight will have a prostate cancer diagnosed at some point in their lives. And it's not so bad in Malaysia, as I said, it's less, less incidency there, but it's uh, starting to be worrying. Uh, one in 20 male Malaysian males will once in their lifetime be diagnosed with such a, a terrible disease. Um, La Visa Pumila holds a special, uh, or Kathy Fatima holds a special significance in Malaysia and I will not explain this to you. You, you know better than, than anyone else. And uh, you know that they are very gender associated or also, sometimes in medicine, in traditional medicine, men can benefit from Labisia and women from Tonkat Ali. But uh, the idea was that um, probably uh, the, 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 um, the more estrogenic or feminine effects of uh, Labisia pumila could be a good, a good starting point uh, to find something against prostate cancer, which is uh, due to, to the high, high testosterone levels or dehydrotestosterone levels. And also La Vice Pumila has uh, a special economic significance for Malaysia, having been one of the five or 10 plants uh, um, targeted by the, your government as, as, as to, to be converted into a global commodity. Uh, the plant materials collection was uh, uh, from a certified plant materials grown in farms in southern Malaysia and authenticated at the University Putra, Malaysia. A uh, voucher was deposited at the Institute of Bioproduct Development at in UTM in Malaysia. And then the air dried and powdered parts, 50 grams, for example, in this case, were macerated with methanol for 22 hours, 72 hours, sorry. The crude methanol extra was redissolved in the classical way in 90% methanol and liquid liquid partitions against hexane, chloroform and water, yield uh, the corresponding extracts that were quite low in, in, in yield. Um, uh, the, the apolar extracts are under 1% in a combined uh, and, and the aqueous extracts was only 3.4%. We studied the cytotoxicity of all these extracts and uh, overall, as you can see in the table, 
both hexane and chloroform extracts, I mean, apolar extracts, were really promising in, uh, but not very specific for the several prostate cancer cells uh, that we were using. Um, that's uh, indicating that probably the action is not specific of the uh, or hormonal or non-hormonal driven prostate cancers. Uh, the water extract or the aqueous extracts were largely inactive and therefore we decided to proceed with the studies of the apolar extracts. Uh, in PC3 in PC3 cells uh, we could see that uh, both um, uh, chloroform and hexane extract induced uh, a, an enormous uh, a, amount of apoptotic uh, features in the cells as, as, as you can see blebbings and, and disruptions of the membranes and as uh, similar fashion both chloroform and hexane uh, paclitax cell seems uh, you can see it's is both and cytostatic but also inducing late apoptosis as you can see in the in the slide when we study the morphological changes in lncap cells uh, we could see that um, there are mo a more marked reduction in the number of cells and there's a slight different um, effect of the chloroform extract which looks like more like paclitax cell inducing uh, apoptotic features in the morphology of the cells whether the hexane extract uh, apart from reducing the the number of cells the morphology of the cells is not that that change from from what a normal cell should be this, and this was confirmed uh, with the cell cycle analysis as you can see the chloroform extract resembles more the action of of paclitax cell whereas the hexane extract is, is more, more, much more different. Uh, both paclitax cell and chloroform extract act by elevating the number of cells in the G2 mitotic uh, cell cycle. The pro-apoptotic activity uh, in PC3 and LCAP cells was uh, correlated with uh, caspases, was an increase in caspases activity, as you can see in the graph bars, pretty much in the same way. It's probably more the difference in early or late apoptosis. Um, the influence of these extracts um, on apoptosis uh, mediated by a mitochondrial uh, mechanism uh, pathway uh, can be seen here as uh, we discovered that the polarization of the mitochondrial membrane was quite quite uh, uh, marked even more than with the reference camptotensin uh, drug uh, and, and as you can see uh, here and in the rest of the, of the slides, always the chloroform extract showing a more marked effect than the hexane extract. Uh, correlation of the effect of the extracts with, with effects on the DNA was uh, also done by a tunnel staining. Uh, well, we can see the control cells in red uh, signifying a healthy cell uh, whereas the, the with a DNA treatment which is a reference of, um, of uh, DNA damage the cells turn to green fluorescence and this is largely mirrored by chloroform extract and hexane extract both acting quite markedly in, uh, in inducing this uh, uh, damage in the DNA that uh, reinforces the idea of, uh, of uh, apop uh, apoptotic uh, activity. Again, chloroform extract is much more marked in its, in its effect than hexane extract where we see some, some cells still are resisting the, the treatment. Uh, the DIAP staining 
uh, where the blue fluorescence indicate chromatin condensation, so at a later stage in the apoptosis, uh, it's, it's quite clear in that uh, uh, both extracts are inducing this, this effect, uh, similarly to the reference uh, drug Paclita. After these uh, studies, we decided to continue only with PC3 cells, which are much more malignant, and, and um, uh, we proceeded to study whether the we could see these uh, apoptotic effects uh, early or late, uh, in late apoptosis or late apoptosis. And as you can see, uh, the extracts uh, both um, diminished the number of viable cells, obviously, and also elevate in different, in different extent the number of cells in early apoptosis. The number of cells in late apoptosis is not that um, much change. Um, both extracts could be also mirror. You can see they mirror the, the effect of camptosis in the drug of reference. Then again, we have uh, these apoptotic effects correlated with the classic uh, BAX BCL2 ratio, uh, which indicates an, an involvement of the mitochondrial pathway for apoptosis, but also with the less known SMAC Diablo uh, molecular marker for mitochondrial apoptosis. Uh, very interestingly, um, the chloroform extract is really different now from the hexane extract in that it's the only one uh, in uh, inhibiting the expression of ALOX5 uh, gene expression. These genes uh, will eventually uh, uh, generate uh, five LOX. 5 LOX or 5 lipoxygenase enzyme, which is known to be a very important pro inflammatory, pro survival of the cell, of the PC3 cell uh, enzyme. We know that the PC3 cell relies a lot in, uh, in the um, synthesis of leukotrienes, which are pro inflammatory mediators to promote the survival of these prostate cancer cells. And a chloroform extract is, is, is very markedly inhibiting the expression of uh, uh, 5-lipoxygenase uh, genes, uh, not the hexane extract. So chloroform extract is a good candidate here now is the, uh, to be subjected to bioguided isolation. But before this, we also studied how whether these uh, structs also are involved in any cell uh, anti-migration effect, which we could also see that is um, quite uh, affected by, by, the, by the both extracts, as well as invasion uh, cells. So migration being the movement in a bidimensional a model, but invasion being here, the three-dimensional movement from uh, across an artificial membrane uh, made uh, with inserts in, uh, in vitro. So last uh, but uh, not least, um, uh, this cell invasion activity is linked also to effects on uh, the gene expression of several cytokines and, and pro-angiogenic -an uh, factors that are uh, classically related with, with, um, with malignancy and with uh, mobility and metastasis of, of cancer cells. As I said, the, the fact that uh, the chloroform extract was uh, differentiated from the hexane in that uh, the minimizing the, the link with the pro-inflammatory uh, component of the prostate cancer cells uh, made it the, the, the candidate for the bioguided isolation of the active compound. So we took this uh, chloroform extract and we ran uh, cephalic uh, chromatography with it, size exclusion, 
uh, obtaining seven major fractions which were subjected to cytotoxic um, test, uh, cytotoxicity test, uh, the SRB staining method. Uh, only one of these fractions, the last one, the fraction seven, was active. Uh, the others were much less active. Uh, uh, and this uh, active fraction was uh, semi uh, frac well, was fractionated in a semi-preparative HPLC. We obtained oh, eight microfractions, of which microfraction five uh, retained the the cytotoxic activity, and uh, and was and was um, composed only of one um, of one compound, uh, which preliminary structure is as you can see an alkyl resorcinol uh, with one um, double bond in a, in the in the 19 carbons a, a alkyl a moiety we are still figuring out where this uh, double bond is is within the alkyl chain but um, uh, very promisingly, uh, the, since the, the cytotoxic effect of this uh, compound is quite uh, specific of cancer cells. As you can see, uh, the extracts uh, were cytotoxic to, quite cytotoxic to the PC3, but uh, they are not cytotoxic to these same cells, to, sorry, to the fibrobl to normal fibroblast cells up to 200 micrograms milliliter, whereas the, the isolated compound, which is uh, five, uh, let's say five micrograms milliliter, it's size 50, is not toxic to normal cells up to 100 uh, micrograms milliliter. The, um, this compound was subjected to several tests to, to prove that it was mm, at least in part responsible uh, for this uh, all pro-apoptotic activities and um, uh, again we could um, verify that it affects uh, the Bax PCL2 ratio towards a pro-apoptotic activity as well as the smac blue gene expression or so confirming uh, mitochondrial driven pro-apoptotic and also uh, the compound could be responsible for for the migration anti-migration effects uh, interestingly enough we could see that the compound was very very active against BEGF-A the pro angiogenic factors uh, but specific of for the inhibition of only one of the chemokines receptors chemokine receptor 12 instead the, the four the four wasn't affected by by this that's indicating a kind of a specificity at this level uh, so just to summarize to summarize the results um, we show here that all active plant extracts and the isolated compound uh, could induce cytotoxicity by a cell cycle arrest um, uh, mostly a G2 emphasis, that the chloroform extract of uh, facid casima and uh, the xane extract and the solid compound could induce uh, PC3 cell death via apoptosis through the intrinsic pathway, which is the, mediated by the uh, mitochondria, uh, with a significant activation of, of all the markers, caspases 3, 7 activity, gene expression of BAX, BCL2 towards a apoptotic ratio, and an increase of SMAC Diablo uh, gene expression. Then, uh, although uh, both extrasexane and chloroform were active till here, only the chloroform extract and the isolated compound were able to inhibit the expression of the uh, gene associated with 5-lipoxygenase, uh, which is uh, uh, a pro-inflammatory uh, mediator uh, helping the survival of this prostate cancer cell. And finally, the active plant extracts were able to also affect quite significantly both cell migration and invasion 
and affect also mo most of the prominent uh, molecular markers for cell movement and cell metastasis. Um, it is true that uh, the bioguided isolation uh, went well and uh, gave um, uh, a pure compound, which is an alkyl resorcinol. And this is the first time we relate this alkyl resorcinol with prostate cancer. But alkyl resorcinols has been also linked to, to anti-cancer effects uh, previously. I'll make Claffy and uh, co-workers isolated this kind of compounds uh, that exert uh, anti-cancer activity, although we have go into much more di detail of the mechanisms of action. All our, our isolated compound is more similar to all the uh, alkyl resorcinols already known um, to Fati Kathy Fathima. Uh, uh, and we are working on re replicating our compound and maybe uh, it will belong to one of those that I already know or maybe uh, will be a new compound. Um, uh, in conclusion, um, the apolar extracts of Lapisia pumila or Marantodes pumilum, like it is uh, the currently accepted name, Kathy Katif Fatima for you, and the isolated alkyl resorcinol were able to overcome three uh, main hallmark, hallmarks of cancer in PC trials: the apoptosis by activating the intrinsic pathway, an inhibition of both migration and invasion by modulating the chemo, chemo um, kinds receptors axis and inhibiting angiogenesis and by modulating pro-angiogenic factors. Further to this research, we'll focus uh, on finalizing the structural elucidation of MP1. And then we will try to exploit its cytotoxicity uh, to make it even more selective towards uh, cancer cells, although the current uh, uh, ratio is quite favorable to, to to normal cells, and uh, then we may have a good lead compound in the years to come, hopefully from your beloved plant, uh, Lavisia pumila, Katif Fatima. Thank you for having me today. And if you have any questions, uh, I'm sorry I cannot uh, be with you right now in, in, uh, in life, but please, by all means, email me uh, to my Liverpool Young Moors uh, email that you have here. Uh, thank you again and uh, have a very nice and fruitful Congress. Bye.